I think we can get started. We're going to be kind of informal today. This is the Yakto Project, Birds of the Feather. And um, my name is Jeff. I'm the community manager for the Yakto Project. Hello. Is that better? Yeah. <laughs> my name is Jeff. I'm community manager for the Yakto Project. I work for Intel. And um, really, the only thing that I kind of wanted to cover today was our, um, we just had the Yakto 1.1 release, which uh, was announced and to some fanfare from the press, uh, to talk about some of the features. Um, first thing I guess I should ask, is everybody familiar with the Yakto Project? Um, do we have any questions that we want to cover? And um, did everybody get t-shirts? Because I brought some. I've got larges, and if you need, I've got one extra large. Extra large. <laughs> Have I got large? One in the back. All right, a couple of you. Pass them back. Chris Devona used to do it. <laughs> Can I just come up gay? I suppose you can come up. Rather more sedate. Yeah, we don't need him back. That's fine. So, um, I don't really have any slides prepared. I thought we'd just go ahead and talk. Does anybody have any, any questions? Anything we want to make sure that we cover? Everybody's all knowledgeable. Maybe we could just all take naps. I was thinking next year maybe we might have a nap off instead of the off. Because you know at this time of day I always get kind of tired, particularly after you know jet lag and everything. Sorry? You know what you for how is Yakto better than Buildroot? <laughs> That's a good question. Any of the there are a few Yakto uh, engineers here in the audience. They might be better prepared than I am to answer such questions. Yes, I've seen some, some stuff like this before, and Armstrong does know something and this other thing, and uh, it's always been very complicated to see the stuff that's been built on top of building packages. Mm -hmm. That's a really whereas whereas Bitroot is very simple, it's, it's made files and I understand made files, so it's, it's easy to understand. <clears throat> okay, so the, the question at hand is how is Yocto an improvement over something like Bitroot, which is based on make, which is a very well understood mechanism for some, for some people. I think arguably for a lot of people. Maybe for, for all of us who went to college like before 1995. Uh, very familiar with make. Um, one thing that is different about BitBake is that it builds much more than just an image the way that BuildRoot does. Uh, it actually builds an entire distribution with a root file system, with uh, packages. You guys might be better able to answer something like this. Do you want to? I, I think packaging is different. You don't get any, any packages at all. You might want to go to the mic around. I'm going to pass the mic around. It'd be like karaoke. <laughs> Yeah, I can't say too much about Builder because I haven't actually used it myself, but uh, uh, certainly you can see that... Uh, All right. <laughs> yeah, I can't say too much about Builder, but uh, certainly the, they don't provide packaging, and we can package through RPM, Deb, Byte Package, or Tubble, uh, and you can really see where your files are coming from you know, from the original source. So uh, we provide a little bit of stuff around licensing as well that they don't maybe cover in as much detail. So, but yeah, can certainly open up before to someone else, maybe. Darren? Sure. Do I have to come all the way up there and stand in front of everybody? Uh, I think maybe <laughs> is the right. I am Darren, working with Yaku. One year. So, Something that's come up several times with people that I've talk, talked to about any one specific task is, yeah, but I can do that one task like this. And you certainly can, and you can probably do that one task really fast, and you can probably do it great through one board. Um, I think where the Yocto project tends to really shine is when you want to do that task for a lot of boards, or you want to do multiple different tasks for um, 
either one machine or a lot of different machines and you want when this when you need to start to scale, I think is when you start to see a lot of the advantages that the Yopter project brings to building embedded build systems. Um, it, adding new recipes, adding new packages, uh, things like that is trivial with the Yopter project. Right. Um, cross cross compiling is trivial. It actually really is. And this is coming from somebody who hasn't been doing it for very long. So um, you, you have the entire open embedded library uh, of recipes which transfer over very easily, sometimes just literally by copying them. Um, I The last three recipes that I've had to add for a few packages that didn't necessarily build cross compile out of the box it was a matter of um, setting C5, CC, AR, LD on the OE uh, extra make something like that argument, and all of a sudden the package builds. Um, so it actually does a remarkable job. If it's an auto tools package, it tends to be even easier. Um, I think about stuff like yeah, a lot of packages compile something and then run that and then the other that is part of the compile. And you handle that automatically. I, I haven't run into a problem with that. I don't know if either of you have dealt with that directly. Um, I can probably hand that off to somebody else. I think the, the, oh, sorry. So the question was: some build, some packages do a multi-stage build. Basically, they build something and they need that something to build something else. Uh, that's part of what they do. They, they use, yeah, they, they um, generate something. Uh, so, I mean, I can talk to that, but if somebody's dealt with that directly, I'll gladly <laughs> give up the floor. <laughs> I, I think the answer is that yes, you, you do find packages like that and generally have to build a native version of that tool to then generate it the data. So there are ways of dealing with it. It Obviously doesn't work it. out the box, but there are examples out there of how it can be done. Yeah, there, there, are, there are many packages like this in, Open, in uh, Yakta and OpenMB. Uh, for example, when a few years ago we, were, we added uh, Employer. Employer during build was building uh, some kind of generator for which generates some files which were used during the build. The only change which was needed was to convince uh, Make that this one tool has to be built for host because it was not used by that. And uh, for many times you will get uh, things like this. You just need to one for some uh, packages you will need to build native version of it and use native version to build target. For some, you just need to convince build system that this binary and this binary needs to be built for host, not for target. There's another problem with the auto build stuff that's not No, go ahead, uh, Bill's coming up too. Um, that quite often um, a local version of something is found by, for instance, lib2, and uh, it's, it's used in, as part of the build process, and something very, very strange happens there. So we actually have lo li liberal, sorry, lib2 has a lot better recently with system support, so it's improved. Um, yeah, but it's still broken. It's not complete. We have some local patches which actually fix some of that stuff. And we've seen a lot less issues with the local memory. Uh, sorry, with the local memory. So it's getting better. It's not perfect yet, but it's definitely improving. There's also tooling to help detect when those things happen. Right. Yeah. Well, when those things when those things happen, we have patches within the compiler so that we can tell when we're linking against something that wasn't within the sysroots or you know we're including header files that went in there as well. So that's the poisoning try and make it easier and more obvious when those things do happen. And, and one, of, one of the other projects is Swabber that it attempts to go through and uh, we run with the, the Swabber activated and, and it looks at the output and actually it, it kind of does an S trace of everything um, to figure out if there's any host interactions the way it should be. So the, the other thing I wanted to mention, I don't know this is good, but it, it's also a, a difference in scope of usage. I think build root is traditionally used on um, very small systems. And if you if your goal is to make a, a very small system, you know, uh, I think I forget. If, if it's kernel, busy box, and a C library, um, you know, talk, uh, C Darren's talk tomorrow. But I, I think the 
the comparison head to head, all the things that were said here are applicable, but also Open Embedded has a, a quite a bit of scope that I haven't seen in building. I haven't looked at it in a couple of years, but um, traditionally it wasn't doing eg libc. It may do that now. But in Open Embedded, you can go all the way up to an XFCE image, a known desktop image, and traditionally that, you know, you could potentially do that in the build root infrastructure, but it's already being done in Open Embedded. There's already lots of users there. So there's already a lot of state of the art around a lot of packages, and you can just use those, and you don't have to find the piece of the make file that needs to use the host compiler versus the other one. It's already there and working. So I, I think there's a, a bit of a scope. If you're building really small systems, I think there's a lot more open. I'd also talk a little bit about features specifically. So there are a lot of <coughs> embedded which um, do things like, um, so, such as, which enhance debugging capability, for example. So we separate out the debug symbols uh, into separate files and separate packages packet um, and it also allows profiling and, and a number of different, so it, in some ways it's just a bigger feature set that's been developed and then it, it adds some complexity admittedly, but it's, it's more powerful in that regard. And Open Embedded is a very large set of metadata, of uh, basically pre-built uh, build yeah, the Yocto project uses Open Embedded as, as a release build system. So, yeah, when I say Open Embedded, I'm referring to the Yocto build system for using the Yocto project. Spe specifically, Open Embedded for. That might be a, a good jumping off point to say do you, are you familiar with Open Embedded, Open Embedded Core, and BitBake? Okay. Uh, it's it's, uh, it's a build system that's very similar. It's but you're setting it. <coughs> Sorry. You're setting it. You're setting it. Sending it. Selling. Selling it. Um, well, it kind of sells itself, really. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, one of you guys might be uh, better able to talk to BitBake and uh, Open Embedded. Um, the one of the things that I think is probably the most important feature that something like BitBait and Open Embedded brings or make is the uh, the large amount of metadata that's available and that's modular. Yocto in particular adds a, a system of layers so that you can start with a core system and add layers on top of it that basically is plugging in, plugging in new features. Which last time I used BuildRoot was like 10 years ago, but it was painful to do something like that. And it's it literally is trivial. It, it's definitely worth checking out. I mean, it's a it's a very easy thing to download and try. And if you don't like it, then definitely stick with Build Group. Well, let us know. And let us know. If yeah. you have problems, let us know. We'll try and help you. Maybe you know, we're in the process of planning uh, the 1.2 release, which is being in, scheduled for the spring. And the main thing that we're working on is usability. So. Um, Anything that is less than usable now is is fair game to discuss, <coughs> which I, I think might be different from the way the builder community works. I haven't been involved with them for many years. Okay. Yes. Uh, just one question. Uh, Buildroot has this nice kconfig uh, front end, mm -hmm. and I was toying with uh, something like. Uh, like generating a kconfig uh, stuff for open embedded, uh, is there some general interest in in pursuing that, or is is it is it uh, of no interest for folks? I wouldn't say it was of no interest. Um, we've we've been trying with Bitbank to split it into a sort of a client and a server. So um, and and you have different sort of front ends and different user visible sort of portions of the, of the system. So at the moment we've concentrated more on adding a graphical front end so that people can look at the, the packages and, and select them there. Yeah. yeah. So okay. we've got the hub UI as an example of that. 
but there is no reason that some K config style configuration user interface yeah, couldn't be added in a similar way. Mm -hmm. So it's definitely of interest, and I keep hearing you know users mm -hmm. talking about that. I think it's it's an interesting idea, mm -hmm. and we could certainly add something to the metadata to allow it to generate some of that K config data and then feed the yeah. information back in. So it's it's possible. Mm -hmm. We just need somebody to step up, I guess, and work on it. Yeah, I sent a stop uh, to the list some time ago, so yeah. One would just have to pick the packages and, and actually build them. Yeah, so, yeah. But if there is a GUI work going on, then fine, yeah. yeah. Uh, maybe to, to add to that, I think maybe one of the interesting things for a tool like that would be to also integrate with the comp so that you could do things like select your machine and and select some of those variables. I believe Builder does this exact thing where you select your target and the number. Yeah, that, yeah I think that was what was being referred to. Okay, I mostly heard package selection. Does that answer your question? Yeah, thank you. So there's a, at the Yocto booth, there's a video of the HAHAP um, user <coughs> interface, um, so you can check that out after. Okay. Did everybody get that? At the Yaku booth, there's a video of the Hob user interface <coughs> that's being developed. Yes? Yeah. I was wondering about the coverage <coughs> analysis support. You Like you're using gcol when you're doing the compilation. Is there any support for controlling that on the top level? I don't think anybody's tried it. So at the moment, no, but I, it okay. probably wouldn't be too difficult to add. This is just a C flag, so you could you could because you can set one C flags in one place and just uh, get it added everywhere. Yeah, yeah, you can change the compiler or you can yeah. intercept things. So, yeah, there's, there's a lot of different ways you can do that. Yeah. The simplest way would be just at the top level. If it, if it is just a C flag, I'm not 100% familiar with how it I'm works. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Some LD flags and, and right, yeah, but but, the, but there are variables you can add those things in very easily. So. I suppose we should introduce you. This is Richard, the project architect. Dave in the corner over there is uh, the engineering manager. I'm Paul. I'm uh, an engineer also working on uh, BitBank and the core libraries, uh, the, sorry, the core classes. Uh, I never knew exactly what your title was. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't have a title. Oh, OK. <laughs> That's good. And Darren in the back is uh, another Yachto. God, I don't know exactly what your title is either. <laughs> Colonel Guy. Yeah, Colonel Guy. You and Saul. Um, yes, user space manager, right? Component Wrangler. Component Wrangler. Okay. <laughs> uh, user space stuff. Jessica's back there. Jess oh, Jessica's back there. Yeah. Oh, Jessica's back there? Yeah. Oh, I didn't see you. Yeah. <laughs> And you want to talk about the ADT? And Bill can, Bill can, Bill is here, Bill. who is a member of the advisory board. Bill's on the advisory board, yes. Yeah. I'm from TI and I'm a, I'm a Yocto fanboy. <laughs> <laughs> and Tracy's back there. Anyway, there's several from the project around, floating around. So, yeah. Is there any uh, reasonably defined uh, goal or target for, for the Yocto project? Because now here again, this uh, for some discussion for open embedded or build group. But there's also, as as I see it now, Yocto project and uh, is pushing open embedded core also more in the opposite direction. Is there is there any general idea of where Yocto project and open embedded uh, core is actually moving? Are are the moving into larger systems? Uh, I see this multi thing coming, and uh, or or do we try to cover everything? Or what is the focus area for Yocto project looking forward, not after, not now? My feeling is that it, rather than having a focus set of targets, that Yocto is really focused more on stability. Um, uh, no, I'm I'm thinking more of like uh, I don't know application <coughs> areas. What yeah. as as I see it, if if you move very much further up to large systems. It's a head-to-head -head, uh, competition also against the uh, more common distributions. Yeah. And that's yeah. uh, let me, can I try and, because I think I hear what you're, you're saying. So, you know, today, 
I mean, supporting all four architectures, you know, ARM, PowerPC, uh, MIPS, and the, what was it? Oh, x86. Uh, you know, it, 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 it's, uh, you know, and also, you know, developing within those frameworks, even within any of those architectures, right? You can build, you know, like a system that has, would be sort of a server kind of system, but certainly not the intent to go, you know, somehow with Red Hat. You know, it's not, not the idea to kind of compete with that. It's absolutely not the case. It's a general purpose distribution, not the intent to try and, you know, get, but there are plenty of single application sort of systems, right, that are traditionally what you call embedded, that, that you could use those bigger processors, right? There's absolutely no reason why you couldn't do that. And some of the people, some of the chip people I know who are doing like communications infrastructure stuff use big processors, but they don't necessarily have big footprint systems, right? So, so that's perfectly you know, rational to do. I think from, this, from where we're going perspective, I kind of feel like we really help. I, I think we're, we're doing a really good job now with people who love Linux. Right, the people who just live the Linux lifestyle is what I say. They 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 love Linux. They're using the the latest distros. They're they really they use Linux every day. I think actually um, the Octo project's doing really well for them. Where I think we could do better is for people who maybe don't you know smoke the the, the Linux you know marijuana all the time. They're like they use <laughs> they use Linux as a, as a means to an end, right? And so I think that's the kind of uh, uh, opportunity I think is there. And I've got a little bit of that feedback. It's like. Uh, you know, I, I have trouble with this or that, and it's like, okay, I think we can do better. And there's a few things where I'm trying to move in that direction a little bit because I'm getting some feedback that's like, compared to, I don't know, whatever else, they, they, they have a few difficulties. And so I want to try and, you know, that's, that's a little bit of my feeling of some <coughs> feedback I want to try and help with, so anyway. I mean, my, my take on that would be that, you know, we're about creating a customized Linux solution, which is not what a lot of the desktop distribution do. Uh, Gen 2 is kind of an exception, um, but th they're all about sort of, you know, their specific distribution and they have a very fixed entity. We're about creating very, very custom systems. And those, cus those custom systems can be big systems or small systems. So what we've been looking at is, is really where there's been gaps in the, in the build system sort of ecosystem and the features, feature gaps, because there was things that were stopping people using a given build system for, for doing things. Hopefully now we have one more fully featured build system that a lot of people can use and can work with. Um, and hopefully not everybody might need all of those features, but hopefully we're going to, we're hoping to be able to reduce that fragmentation and then allow people to collaborate more and, and then build one really, really strong build system rather than having several with big missing feature gaps. So I, I don't see it com competing with the, the desktop distribution plan. That's just... But anyway, it's, it's at least you're competing with yourself then. Because there are other directions that you have to also go in that is sort of not completely compatible with that one. Can you give an example? Yeah, example, I, I know it's a, it's a sour point uh, and it's been discussed recently, but uh, mention it, Useflex, this discussion that has been going on in OpenBed for a long time. But no, I don't want to take the discussion here, but, but the, the, the general idea is that one thing, um, when you, as you say, one of the good things that uh, Open Embedded bring that is not in Open, uh, for example, build group, uh, similar systems, is all these packages. But packages brings a cost. And, and I saw recently that a direction that we are heading is to be uh, see a more defined split that we generate binary packages and then we build the image. This brings the cost of it's not as easy and not as um, cost free to make it heavily customized, because that may, means that, that this split gets complicated. Well, specifically on the use flags issue, I know that one has bounced around the open embedded community for a long time. I think we'll, and we'll continue. No, I, I think we've actually reached a bit of a consensus there, because there has recently been um, the config option um, code which merged, which is a way of handling that and allowing recipes and layers to change the default configuration or allow distributions to override that and so on. So I think we finally found a way to integrate kind of use flags functionality without causing some of the fallout and the risks to the package, packaging side. You know, these flags have to be set specifically for a given distro and can't be changed within that distro confine, but it does allow people to customize and do what we want them to be able to do. So I think there is a, there's recently been some very positive moves there. It's really just taken a, it took a proposal where um, the various concerns got addressed and, and you know, everybody could 
find a way of building on top of it, but I think we've got that now. So I'm actually quite positive on that topic at the moment. I think it's also worth saying that when you talk about a, pre, a canned distribution, that's not really what Yocto's goal is. Yocto's goal is to be able to kind of create your own distribution that is customized. So, um, when you set up, for example, a full-blown known <coughs> system, that is not normally something that you would want to compete with really in, in this kind of context. It will be so big that in any way you don't want to customize it so heavily in details right. with such a big system. Yeah. Right. So I, I was wondering if my comment had caused confusion. So the full GNOME is not part of Yakko. It's part of uh, open embedded as a larger ecosystem. I think it's very useful to have those packages available to draw on. Um, so I don't envision the Yocto user base building, distributing a system with the full GNOME uh, desktop. However, you may want to pick and choose a couple of those things and customize the way they use, and the fact that they're available, already working in this ecosystem, is, is a great resource to draw on. Same with XFCE, Enlightenment, there's a number of different ones. So Yocto for focuses on a core piece, and then there's lots of options, you know, prior art out there that you can draw on. That is easy to integrate. Yeah. yeah. What are the use flex? <laughs> and there is no... <laughs> uh, I, I, I missed that as well. So what so what, the what the is use flex? flex? You were what talking about the use flags. What are use flags? Okay, so the, the best example I can think of simply is to take something like a GStreamer's plugin package, and it's a question of which plugins you would want to build within that GStreamer plugin package. So, you know, if you have Flock available, you might want to build plugins that use Flock. Um, but it's a question of whether you want to enable or disable that. Some users might want to enable Flock, some users may not, some may want Aug, some may not, some may want FB3, some may not. So the idea is we can have some default policy, but um, a given distro or a given user or, or whatever, a given layer can override that and, and should make changes to that, that default. Good question. Yeah. With uh, respect to requirements and direction you're going and so on, I was wondering, did you do any analysis study uh, of whatever the real needs of the embedded community are before making those choices. To give an example, <laughs> if, 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 if you want to, I do embedded systems for 25 years or so, and most of them are single contained images, and packages is nice, and package feeds is also nice, but most of the distributed systems uh, uh, are from dishwashers to uh, uh, TVs, uh, they don't have that. Mm -hmm. Probably don't want it. I, we've, I mean, we, we have discussed this in person with a number of different people. We've also asked for the mailing list. And we've very, well, as a project, we're very, very open to feedback. So there are a variety of different ways you can talk to the project. And a, a lot of that representation does go into what you see on the, on the feature list and the things that we try and target. You know, we've, this, for this next release, usability is definitely, and user experience is definitely going to be a target because those are the things that people, I keep hearing um, people being a little bit, you know, unhappy with. So there are a variety of ways in which you can talk to the project about that. I think in general, the, the sort of the typical embedded systems are becoming more and more intelligent. So, you know, your, your dishwasher is suddenly being able to connect to the internet and you download new, you know, uh, washing programs or, or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but, so yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's, the, yeah. Is, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it might need to connect to the power grid so that it can tell what the most, you know, cost-effective time to do the dishes would be. You know, what time is it going to get the cheapest electricity? I, I don't know. But the, the devices are becoming smarter, so you're, you're seeing a demand for more complex stacks in some of these embedded devices. So I think I think the world is changing slightly in that regard. So I, some of this complexity is actually needed. And I, I, another example of that in my home, actually, is I've just bought a, a new uh, receiver, a hi-fi receiver in my home, and it's got an Ethernet plug in the back. I thought, oh, that's interesting, so I can stream, you know, internet radio. 
But then it's like periodically it takes a, a firmware update, and it's like the, the first one was huge, and then it takes, and then the the, the, upper, the next one's a little. I realized, oh, this is exactly why you you want to have a packaging system so you don't have to replace everything, right? And then uh, when it's taking its firmware updates, well, I'm sure whatever OS the thing is running, I don't think it's Linux. It's it's like a Denon, and I'm not sure what OS it's running, but it's it's basically something like that that you can modularize firmware updates, and that's exactly you know, an interconnected device. Obviously, if something's not connected to anything. Part of the application here is application development. If you're developing an app and you don't exactly know what packages need to go in, it's nice to have a packaging system so you don't have to reburn the whole image when you're, you know, adding a new package. So. But you're right. If we're very open to input, very, very much so. And and I've been working on try to, you know, talking to people and trying to create them into some stories that that we can all kind of you know, get a concept around and say, oh, is this the kind of story of the, of the developer that we'd really like to try to really serve? And so those are, the, you know, some of that methodology we're trying to use to, to determine a direction and requirements. That's a very good point. Because there is not a single picture of one embedded developer. Everybody goes through their own, their own uh, story. Experience, yeah. yeah. Well, and, and this is drawing on the experience of Open Embedded. And Open Embedded was not an academic experience, right? right. It, there are many developers there that have many years of doing embedded systems. Basically, Open Embedded was created because the founders of Open Embedded found their hack, deeply hacked version of build root too limited. And they decided that they need to start something from scratch and do it in a way they want it to work. Getting back to the original question as well, uh, your final root address does not have to have patching in it, so it's optional. Yes, you can make a tiny, tiny Linux if you want. The whole idea is to improve the workflow, not necessarily. To, to, yeah, absolutely. Jeff, you don't need to, it doesn't have to be tiny. You can have <coughs> a half gigabyte image with OpenMB there, which sure. will not have any packaging information in it. That's true. Because it's just a matter of create image and then strip all packaging mm -hmm. the, whole, the whole idea is to improve the workflow. But packaging <coughs> is uh, very useful when you have to build several images or you build for few machines, few devices. Because you do one build, for example, you have five, uh, ARM5 devices. Each one needs different kernel, few different packages and for each of them you build different image. So you run a build for first machine, so it will build all host native machine uh, packages, it will build uh, tool chain, it will build target uh, system, then you build another machine. Everything which runs on native was already built. First tool chain was built most of the uh, system for target was built, so you get new, new kernel because oh, this is different device and requires own kernel, few other packages, and image <coughs> is created. I, I understand what you're saying, but that's not really a real life uh, use case. Most embedded developers develop for one specific platform and don't switch machines because of this package this product I'm building is going to work on that hardware. And I'm not going to support it on five hardwares because we sell the system, and I think most of the embedded developers sell the system. So a board with software on it in a nice box, and that's sure. it. I had a moment when I had six different developer boards at the desk, and I had to support five of them. OK. I wouldn't call it, uh, say most because we <coughs> work at 40 different products at the same time. We have mostly the same configuration, but it, without differences. And to us, using uh, reusing the build packages uh, would enable uh, enormous speed ups compared to what we have today, which is we're building from source all the time. Uh, so that's 
uh, packaging that uh, using binary packaging like that is uh, definitely something we would not to have. <coughs> uh, but on the other hand, we're using uh, uh, when we're installed, we're in installing a firmware, and it's all we don't we can, we don't have the option to um, upgrade the product using uh, packages. You just refresh the device when you. You do, you do update by refreshing the... Update. Exactly. And which means we need a mechanism for updating securely uh, and downgrading. Yes, but you can, you can use uh, Yakto to build image for your device. And if this image needs some extra... needs to be in one format with something added, etc. It's just a matter of adding, of uh, writing task, which will do this all this magic after creating image. Yeah, I, I don't have the problem with creating the image in, in itself. The, the problem is comes when the user is upgrading. Right, it's the, it's the factory reset or uh, yeah, well, update up, update downgrade process. Yes, exactly. And and that's a. Problem a lot of a lot of people have. I, I would <laughs> assume so. Yes, <laughs> we can't be the only ones. Right. It's actually something that that we've talked about a little bit at the project level. Uh, we don't have the resources ourselves right now to, to do it. But if there is somebody that wants to contribute that, <laughs> well, that, that well yeah. kind of and that's the kind of thing that. Oh, sorry. I was going to say that's the kind of objective that the Octo exactly. project has had to try and you know instead of everybody doing this thing in the silo and just doing it themselves to share the pieces that make sense. I mean, each of these use cases that people have been describing are all valid. You know, and you know some people have lots of devices, embedded devices that are similar, and this this kind of code makes sense. Some people, like, you know, like France, there don't have that, but it, it makes sense to have a system that is modular enough to allow you to make use of these different components and not have too much pain from the fact that the other components are present, they don't need to use them. So that's what we're trying to achieve with this. We, we appreciate everybody has these different needs, but we're, we're trying to address them. Yeah, what he said. <laughs> <laughs> On most of the same subject, when you are doing a uh, package reject, write remotely, uh, not the user is a weak, sometimes it can break. Uh, and you end up with a device that you can't roll back or you are in the middle of something that you can't fix. Mm -hmm. uh, does some uh, some device solve this by having a second uh, boot system that is always able to... Can you? Oh. <laughs> it's hard to hear you. Uh, sorry. Uh, I'm fine enough. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, uh, some device have a double boot system where it's uh, able to just refresh uh, and take firmware there. Does it make sense to provide this kind of feature of uh, having a generic very small uh, distribution uh, that would just do the rescue stuff, uh, connect yes. to a network? Yes. 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 Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, can, you can definitely provide a small image and build such a small image yeah, with the system. Can, so well, you, you could do that. You can do that, but do that as being Something well, let's, let's do from. this. I, I think this is something we've talked about in the past. I've kind of suggested, and maybe it's my fault, I've sort of suggested that's maybe more of a sort of an implementation specific thing that seems so specific to, uh, that it, it was tough to come up with a default of some sort for the project. But if you if it would help the community enough to you know, provide, try and bring in some more of those tools, <coughs> we can sure look at it. And so I see a lot of people would say, well, I would love to have some sort of factory reset or something. I, see, I feel like that's like a a distro policy as opposed it, to uh, something for Yakto. It, it's, ver it, it's very user specific yeah. to the particular hardware that you're using. Yeah. But I, I'd love to see, I mean, well, one, of the, one of my hopes with this project is to see groups of people forming around those kinds of issues. So I, I could, when you were saying, can we create that, I was seeing a few other people nodding in the audience. And if all those people could get together and actually yes. sort of collaborate on that, yes. I, I, I would more than love to see a layer or something like that with this kind of functionality in. If it's being used by loads of people, it may make it into the core. You know, there are a variety of different ways something like that can progress. But I'd, I'd love to see collaboration like that under, under the sort of the, the project would be a, it would be great to see. It. Yeah. Even characterizing the problem would be a useful. Well, thing. yeah. Mm -hmm. and a number of people just shared the examples that they have, right? I mean, there's 
there's a user present, there's not a user present, you, you have a, a factory default, you have a safe image, a recovery image, or you have two active. There, there's a number of variables there. You have different hardware, you have flash that you can lock, you don't have flash that you can lock. There's a number of things there that it's not easy to sit down today and say, okay, this is what we need to provide as a project. But if people can share their individual point solutions as examples, then as a group, we can probably look and say, okay, all these examples have this in common. Let's factor that out. Um, and there's still going to be some, uh, you know, per deployment issues that you're going to need to solve. But, but the, for example, the first person who shares that layer, you know, the next person who comes along doesn't have to start from scratch. They might be able to look at that and improve on it, and it's an iterative process. So, yeah, you know, collaborate, and it, it's something that the project can provide. something. Um, for those of you who may be unaware of this, we have set up uh, interest groups uh, on the wiki. Uh, this will be a great way for people to collaborate on issues that we were just discussing. So if you go and check that kind of area out in the wiki page, if you're interested in creating an interest group, I think your primary contact is, is right here. This is Jeffra. So um, that would be a really useful way for us to try and start collecting this type of collaboration. That's a very good point. And uh, the wiki, of course, is on yakoproject.org. If anybody wants to go and look at it. <clears throat> so are you, uh, are you aiming at uh, certain capability of Yakto project? Uh, when I talk about capability, I mean uh, do you want to uh, aim building different uh, products at the same time, for example, it's a smart TV, we talk about smartphones or any other device, or uh, for a particular uh, device itself, if it's targeted to be, uh, to be uh, generate uh, or uh, produce product for different markets, then there might be certain customizations. So, uh, could it be done in parallel, or I mean, uh, do you are you thinking in those directions? So th this is why we have the whole layer structure that we have. The, the core itself is, is meant to be a set of generic tools that you can build to to, to build a, a general sort of customized Linux system. You know, generally it would be something that could be used in, in an embedded environment. So, okay. So the, the idea um, was to have a generic sort of layers mechanism. So if you're going to have a product specific stack for TV, as you just mentioned, or some other specific projects, uh, some other specific target stack, then that would be uh, probably best done in a layer on top of the generic core. But it, the whole point of having the layers mechanism is to allow that kind of customization and allow collaboration in those layers. I mean, we're already seeing this with Darren's method, Tiny, which was about creating the very, very small images. That's being done in the layer. We're seeing other kinds of development in the layers. So the, the tooling is being developed around that. And if there were obstacles, you know, if, if when we try that, we, we see if any issues, we're definitely working on those in the core to try and find ways to address them and allow that kind of thing to be possible. But I also think Yocto is, is a bit different than. Like if you, if you were to contrast it with Migo, I mean, Migo has identified four or five specific markets that have a you know considerable body of products that are going to be built, and they're going after that. Um, well, I think Yocto um, is aimed at everything else, right? Um, it's and about any customized Linux. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, you know. Right. I, I think there may be um, congregation around a specific use case at a layer, 
but I don't think Yocto is going to define here are the markets that Yocto is, is after, right? I mean, right. It's not exactly. Yeah. That, that's not something we are, not, that's not something we're set up to do. No. It's not a platform. Right. And Migo is a, is a platform. <coughs> <laughs> so we're getting the five minute uh, warning. Anybody have any other questions? Anybody still need a t-shirt? <laughs> I have larges here. There are other sizes over in the booth as well as demos. So feel free to stop by the booth. And stickers. Uh, check out demos. We have a preserve. I, I have a question. Yes. Hey, maybe it's more to you. Yeah. Um, the Yoxo project right now, what what is the called status of uh, the partners? What kind of, if you take the broad picture, what kind of companies uh, are partners right now? I see that uh, TI and, and Intel is there, but that's kind of a very special company. They are not really producing products in, in that way. They are producing building blocks. Exactly. So what what's the broad overview? Give it to uh, oh, you. You can <laughs> talk to this one. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I answer this a little bit. Uh, my name is Sean Hudson, and I'm actually representing Mentor Graphics uh, on the advisory board for Yonko. Uh, so here's a software company. We sell our own embedded Linux distribution. Uh, did you play the the Frankenstein video? I have not played the Frankenstein video yet. You I don't think I have audio here. I know that graphics is enough. If you haven't seen it, you should check it out on YouTube, or we might have it running in the booth. But uh, there's a couple other companies that are on the advisory board. The main thing to keep in mind is that this is intended to be um, a collaboration between corporate interests, like Intel TI, Mental Graphics, Mono Vista, and, and others, um, to name a few, uh, and the open source community. So Open Embed has been around for a while. We're, we're trying to kind of stabilize around that core piece. So I don't know if I'm answering your question, but um, in, in our case, we're planning to build products on top of it and then provide service related to it. So we have very strong interest in making sure that this runs on the TIs, on the Intels, on the free scales. I know you guys hate when I say that. Um, and, and pretty much any other platform uh, that we can then sell the product on top of. So that's that's our interest in it. So the, the, quest, the question is why are some of those people interested in this project? And the reason why is because the the, the hardware vendors find it difficult to deliver some of the, the Linux software to to the OSBs. The OSBs get this thing in different formats. They have different tools, and it makes no sense to compete on these things. So that's why there's an interest well, there from those different groups. Yeah, it, it's not really. OSVs don't create products. That, yeah, products the, the point so, is actually that that yeah. that us that are really making the products, uh, windmills, washing machines, stuff like that. We have some very concrete experience and requirements that we know that simply are not debatable. And from Intel and TI, might not have the same direct contact of what is actually needed. And and also from an open embedded uh, project point of view, all this experience. A lot of that is also from a kind of a different area than I know that it's not entirely that it's all I used open embedded for 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 these kind of uh, products and but there there are also some experiences for exactly where are the weak points but but I'm not sure that Intel and TI are the right ones to spot these weak points because they might not have stood in the real trouble out in so the real world. We, well, we do go to the field on those customers. So, um, but it, you know, we recognize that we don't have enough end users represented today. Um, and that's something we're looking to recruit. So, if you're yes. interested in participating, I, I think we, we do. We do. Um, Steve Sockerman is a con is a uh, contract engineering um, independent. Uh, contractor does a lot of uh, contracting with uh, individual companies producing products, um, working directly with them to produce products, and, and Steve is on the advisory board as well. Um, Philip Ballister, another 
Yes, end user. Phillips also. Yeah. Um, we're looking to get some end user companies in the advisory board as well. Um, but yeah, I, I think the project is in the early stages. I, I, if we will judge success when we have a number of end user uh, developers um, you know, giving us that. Maybe it might also help if there was a bit more openness on, uh, that's one thing I've heard a lot of times, heard it today here also, is about we have been talking with, and, and the job to project requirements seems to come from some, from uh, us looking at the job to project from outside secret negotiations with unknown partners. We don't even know where the requirements come from. Uh, and, and maybe that, maybe they come from these kind of companies. I don't even know. One of the things I want to answer that too, um, we really are trying to make sure that um, we're engaging with the community. We are having a little bit of difficulty in terms of, of getting participation. Partly I think that's a failure on our part to get information out there. There's a weekly technical call which we are wanting people to try and participate in. Um, we really are looking for more help. Uh, in my particular case, like I said, I represent Mentor and we are very interested in making sure that what we develop is useful to those individuals who need it because that's our bread and butter. We're going to sell a product that is supposed to accelerate your time to market, that kind of a thing. Um, so if we're missing the mark, then we need to and want to know about that. So anybody in this room that has an interest, if they can, you know, begin to contact, you know, Jeffro is a great contact. I'm happy to, to you know, hand out business cards in the back or whatever. Um, we really want people to start telling us where we're doing things well, where we're doing things not so well, and help us to make it better. So help us to, to give you the information so that you can participate. Does that help? Yeah. As an open source project, we are very interested in transparency also. Yeah. And uh, if we have, if, if the image is that we've been developing things in secret, then that's an image that we need to fix. I didn't say develop. I said that, okay. that whenever we or get this, things. we say, uh, we need this, no, uh, and I don't think this is needed. Well, we have with speaking with people, we know that this is needed. That is not really transparent. That uh, seems like either bluff or secret. It's not transparent anyway. Okay. Well, the, 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 there is a certain level. I know that might be NDAs reasons for that, no, but that the, doesn't there really are, There aren't NDAs. I just, no. I mean, some of these requirements do come from things that I hear from people when I talk to them at conferences like this and so on. They're not willing to step up. They, they haven't been willing to step up and actually put themselves, you know, they don't want to take the time to go and write this thing on the wiki and file f the feature enhancements in the books yeah. and so on. But those processes are available and I'd yeah. encourage people to use them. We've, we've definitely been very open about encouraging that. And I think if you if you want more details about where some of these requirements are coming from, I'm willing to provide that information. I, and let me let me echo that. I mean, as a as a, again as an open source project, uh, you know, in terms of the requirements and the features, we've from the beginning we've had a, a page in the wiki where people anyone can file a, a feature request, and you know, in, in the bugzilla you can you can do that the same enhancement request. It's um, but you know, with Richard being the well, you know, he's sort of the Linus Torvalds of you know, Yocto, right? He's a Linux Foundation fellow. I mean, that's sort of uh, why, you know, he's set up that way. And the idea we have a, a proper project, I think, with maintainers and, and the intent is to, to drive it that way. Us on the advisory board are really just, you know, offering, you know, kind of, you know, suggestions, influence, uh, requirements when, as we hear about them. And so that's, you know, kind of, but, but to be clear, I mean, the meritocracy of this thing is really as an open source project. That comes from, you know, whether it's the requirements of the development or when it's done or any of those other things. So we're trying to be, if there's any point at which we're not doing that or we appear not to be doing that, please let us know because we're trying really hard to do this. And we're legitimately trying. Sometimes, I mean, I hope you see we were sincere. We may be sincerely wrong, but we're trying to be. <laughs> <laughs> I'd also mention that some of these requirements as well come from the experts in the particular areas that we're working on. So we've added RPM support. Um, going back a couple of releases, and a lot of that, a lot of the requirements on the RPM side have come from the experts in the RPM field, um, and that th those aren't people in Open Embedded because Open Embedded didn't traditionally have that support. So it's coming from the maintainers and the, the people who actually, who actually, you know, know the, these particular areas. So th these these requirements and, and things come from a whole load of different directions. Uh, 
<coughs> I guess it, it's kind of hard to just to reflect that on the wiki, but it's not any intent to mislead, it's just the it's about meritocracy, what, yeah, yeah, when yeah, you say exactly. it that way, yeah. I mean, you're basically saying, look, it, it's not like let's cast and have everyone out there in the world give us ideas, and that's great, but a lot of times you need code and you need expertise to kind of be driving that, so yeah. anyway, that's the intent. I listen to Bill, so, you I know, mean, I, I, I kind of, I try, anyway. <laughs> but, but I think it's, it's one of the very first, th I mean, the, if there's a secret cabal in Yocto, it's the advisory board. And one of the first things we did on the advisory board was to vote to make sure we had no power. Um, so <laughs> so it, we changed the name so it was advisory board. Um, we made the mailing list open. Um, you know, we're, we're trying not to be a secret cabal. Yeah. If, if, like if Jeffro says, if we appear that way, uh, tell us. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I mean, I, in our last meeting, we had Dave Rustling, who's the CTO from Lenaro, come in, and we were talking about stuff. And we're just, we're all very, you know, open about stuff. That's mm -hmm. fine. I'm, I'm going to go out and say, we can do better. Yeah. And we will do better, regardless of, of you know, our intentions. Um, I will offer that we do have the mailing list. Uh, the archives are available. I'm not saying go and read all of this. Stuff but uh, hopefully some of what we're referring to it comes out of that. But we can do better and we look for advice and help from you guys on how we can. Please help us to make ourselves more transparent. Some of it is, you know, for me, I'm, I've been a corporate guy for a long time, so that doesn't necessarily come uh, very naturally. And if you help me, then it's not because of the lack of intent. So let, help us to help make ourselves more transparent, but we will do that. And the process is improving, because we're now using the Bugzilla to track the feature enhancement requests, and the Bugzilla does have a submitter field. So in that way, there is more transparency associated with it. A lot of the current stuff does have me as the submitter, because I was the one who transcribed the wiki page into the Bugzilla. <laughs> <laughs> And that's a process improvement that yeah, we can make. Exactly. <laughs> so we've made that improvement. We're, we're trying to, you know, going forward, we'll hopefully have better data. Mm -hmm. video. You want to watch the video? Don't I want to watch the video. All right. <laughs> we'll watch the video, and I think we're going to be uh, finishing up, too, because it is just almost 6 o'clock. <laughs> okay, we've got a big stop button. Can we play the video? It's like a minute and a half long. It's all up to you, but the bus is leaving in 15 minutes. Okay. okay. Come on. All right. Everybody runs out the door. What bus? He said, if you have two bus, you get it. Thank you. 
because Yocto gives you an updated recipe to create a new OS for the next device. And best of all, you can retain your optimizations and coding if you want to switch to a commercial Linux vendor. Basically, all your work is reusable. Hey, that HDTV Blu-ray microwave washing machine's not going to build itself. Go to www.yoctoproject.org to get started. And with that, I think we're done. Thank you guys for talking so much. Thank you for very much for the feedback. Please feel free to stop by the Octo Project booth to see all of our uh, demos and such. And if you didn't